What's up everybody and thank you for joining me for another video. My name is Wack4863, but you can call me Wack. Today I wanted to look at all the different spells that we've seen in the live streams or in the trailer from Funcom for Update 3.0 Age of Sorcery. So here we have the first one. This is the Ice Bridge and I am doing most of this from the live stream where Jordy actually got to play Update 3.0 for the first time live on her Twitch channel. Now I will have Jordy on my channel towards the end of the week, so if you want to hear my interview with Jordy, do subscribe to the channel and click the bell for notifications so you know when that video goes up. So jumping right into it, a little earlier on or a little bit later on in this live stream, they mentioned that all of the sorcery is unlocked for Jordy. So it looks like initially there are five different stones that are going to be across the screen and then you select one of those stones and it drills down to other options inside of those initial options. And what we have here is what they call darkness. I'm not sure about the full names of any of these. It's just how they refer to them in the live stream. Here, again, we have another spell which looks to be a wisp. I think they call this imbue wisp. So that's really cool. It's kind of a light source that you don't have to hold in your hand. So three spells in, we have the ice bridge, we have darkness, and then we have the wisp, which offers you light. On to some more spells, and here you can see the five different stones, and they are going to select one of those stones. It pops up with a different set of three stones, and there are different options in there. So I believe this one is what they call slow fall. That's the fourth one in the list that we have seen so far. And this one allows you to jump off of high areas and not take damage when you hit the ground. And I'm sure that a lot of these are linked to an amount of time. So you cast this spell and then that spell is active either in that area or on your character for a certain amount of time. Here we're actually going to see her cast the lightning storm and that is really cool. And the way that they've explained the lightning storm is that it randomly shoots lightning at the ground and that it can hit some of the enemies and Jordy actually gets a hit. It's a little bit off screen on the video, but she actually vaporizes one of the NPCs that's in this camp with the lightning storm. Additionally, with the lightning storm, it also causes a slight amount of darkness. So there's a little bit of darkness that you see with the lightning storm. I'm not sure that it's enough darkness to cause the NPCs to behave any differently, and I don't think it's going to be dark enough for other players not to be able to find you. But if you pay close attention right now, there's lightning that strikes to her left, and there's an enemy that was completely vaporized by that lightning. We also know from this same clip that there are multiple things that are required to cast sorcery. So not only do they require you to have a certain amount of corruption, you can see she also spawns in what's called a leather pouch. And this is required to actually cast this spell. So a tangible item and the corruption are going to be required in order to cast some of these spells. This next spell that she's going to cast is the Lava Flow. Now, they recently mentioned the Lava Flow on their blog post as one of the sorceries that you're going to be able to do. And this one, you can see it requires 20% corruption to even get into this level of the casting. So it looks like some of them are locked by 20% corruption. The lightning storm was locked behind 40% corruption. So there are going to be spells at different levels of corruption that you can choose to do. So it'll be interesting to see where that fine point is of how much corruption you give your character and what spells that actually gives you. And you can definitely tell this is like a blocking spell. This is something where you could be headed through a narrow area, turn around and drop this behind you and stop any pursuers from continuing to be able to follow you with ease. 
This is also a blocking spell as far as I understand. It does have an actual mesh that you cannot walk through. So this is another thing and even in the comments during the live stream, I saw people talking about blocking doorways in PvP so that people couldn't get in or out of their base. But additionally, they talked about this particular spell having a larger area for aggro. So things are going to want to attack this instead of your character, or they're going to see this before they see your character. And hopefully that sends the aggro to that particular spell. In the trailer, we actually get a view of some kind of destruction spell. Now, I don't know what the purpose of this would be other than to maybe harvest resources. I mean, it's not like there's any other players or there's any animals in the area while they're doing this. It's just the resources that get destroyed. So for me, that's one that I'm really excited to test out once I get my hands on update 3.0. I wanna know in the comments section below, what do you think this particular spell does? Does it give you resources or does it just clear a large area? Now, one of the things they talk about is the effect of corruption on your character. And you can see just how kind of mangled and gnarly your character looks when they're corrupted to that level. But there is a spell to conceal that corruption and they're going to show that off right here. And it makes you look normal even while you're carrying a lot of corruption. The other thing that Andy kind of hints at is that there may be an additional reason for the corruption concealment that they haven't led onto yet or that they have future plans of developing and implementing into the game. The other one that we've seen quite a bit of is what they call the Call of Nurgle. Now that's where the bat comes and picks you up and you're able to essentially control that bat. And they actually show in this clip how that works. There is an endurance bar like there is with your horse and it looks like you can ride this thing as long as the bat has endurance. Now I think this is definitely one that you match with the slow fall. So like I said before, I think a lot of these different spells are based on an amount of time. So timing the slow fall spell ending with the end of your flight, I think will be important. And you can see she is controlling which way the bat is going, whether it's going up, whether it's going down. And you can see that endurance continues to slowly fall. They also mention in PvP that it's very easy for someone to shoot you right off of your bat. Another one that we've seen is invisibility, sneaking past targets. They don't even see you when you run by. It'll be very interesting to see how this is used for players to get around certain content. So any content that they don't want to engage in, do they just run past it with invisibility? Another sorcery that they've shown is the resource detection. Now, I'm not sure about this particular sorcery. Is this something that most people would use? Maybe while they're getting used to the map or they're getting used to the game, they might use this sorcery to find certain resources, but I feel like the resources are stagnant. So for the most part, once you find it, you know where it is and there's no need for this particular sorcery any further. So that is all the spells that I remember seeing across all the live streams and the trailer. You guys let me know, did I miss any in the comment section below? Moving on from spells to more of the crafting or the table based sorcery. So we obviously have a summoning a mount. This is a demon rhino that you can summon in. And they talk about the fact that this is a temporary or a disposable follower. So it is not something that you're going to be able to keep forever. Additionally, we have a shallow grave and it says raise the dead. They are going to 
perform a ritual to have a zombie follower come up out of the ground. This is pretty cool. They didn't talk about whether this was also a temporary follower or if this was a permanent follower. They did say that it had to be a fighter or an archer in the live stream. So this isn't going to turn your alchemist into a follower. It's going to be a fighter or a archer that has to go in there and then they become a resurrected corpse. And a little side note here, they actually spawn this guy in. You can see how much damage that resurrected corpse is doing. Now it is just using its hands. I don't know if you're able to give them a weapon or armor or anything like that, but it was doing a decent amount of damage to that target. We also have sorcery on the sacrificial stone, and it appears that they are capturing the soul from this NPC, and the animation that goes on is absolutely crazy. It'll be interesting to see if people have issues standing there watching this animation at any point in time, because it is really good and it is really creepy. And it appears that that is the animation that is going to allow you to corrupt your perks. So the resources that you get from the soul drain or whatever they call it is the soul essence and you are able to corrupt your perks with the soul essence. They also talked about different weapons that you are able to call in through the sacrificial stone. And these weapons have a timer on them. You can see the timer is ticking away while she's holding it in her hand. So it'll be interesting to see how powerful those actually are once we get them in game. We also have the teleportation stone. Now, they did say that this particular bench will give you corruption that cannot be cleansed for a certain amount of time. My guess is that's the debuff that you see on the screen right now, LOC tainted. A certain amount of your corrupted health and stamina cannot be cleared or cleansed until that debuff wears off. And the last thing here is weapon illusions. They have placed this in the category of sorcery. So you place something in the first slot that you want the stats from, something in the second slot that you want the appearance from. Now, things that I've heard in the live streams and the devs talking about is you have to know the recipe for these items and they have to match. So if you want a short sword, you have to use another short sword. If you want a helmet, you have to use another helmet and you have to know how to craft it. So for any of you that wanted to have a legendary looking item or stats from a legendary weapon without the appearance of a legendary item, that's not actually gonna happen. It has to be something that you know how to craft. I personally really want to have my helmet look like a pair of earrings. I think that would be really cool. So I'm hoping that's an option once we get update 3.0. You guys, let me know in the comment section, what are you most excited about with the Age of Sorcery? I'd like to thank all my YouTube members for your continued support. Y'all are absolute legends. If you'd like to become a legend, there's a button that says join on this page. Click that for details. There's two videos on the screen. Click one of those to watch next and I'll meet you over there.